But if you are, like I said, if you got that and you're a little weak or whatever, you need to get full of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way you're going to make it. The only way you're going to last through some spiritual warfare is fighting with the Spirit. I say it every week. You got to get full of the, you, you, Man, that ought to be your prayer every time you open your mouth. Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost and give me the power to fight in the Spirit. Not see things in the natural and make a natural decision out of emotion. That's what I got to do. Okay? That's what you have to do. You have to fight in the Spirit. But you have to also pray to God for contentment. Now listen, our society has caused many to constantly desire more than they have. That's our society. The music they listen to, the things they watch on TV, the people they follow on social media, keep them in a state of discontentment. That's what it's there for. The government puts you at home so you will watch the internet and see all the things that you don't have and all the things you're going to want. Some folks are going to take the mark just so they can get what they want. Luke, 20, Luke 12 and 15. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he what? Possesses. Y'all don't hear me up here talking about money and preaching about money. We don't do that here. We don't come here to elevate your income and your status. We don't talk status here. We wouldn't have known what most of us are driving if we didn't have this outdoor service. Ain't nobody coming out here checking out what you drive. We don't care. It's not even that kind of church. This is not a money-oriented church. Amen. It's not. It's not. But this state makes it hard to keep a good prayer life. It's hard to keep a prayer life being discontent. Let me explain. This is what the Lord showed me. He said, when you pray and you are discontent, you will either pray for what you want or you will not pray like you should because you aren't seeing the result you want based on your discontentment. So being discontent makes folks not have a prayer life. Why pray if I'm not going to get what it is I want? And when I pray, I'm not getting it. So why bother? And when they do pray, they're praying about what they want. Lord, bless me to come up. You promised me. Lord, you promised. You said in your word that I would come up. You said that that, that I would be the head and not the tail. Lord, make me the head. Make me the head. Lord, make me the head. Yeah. So those are the prayers you're praying or you're not praying at all. That's what discontentment does. It totally draws you away from God. Fully. Discontentment will always make a person seek after what others have. This is covetousness, and it cripples a person's pursuit of righteousness. So instead of trying to be in right alignment with God, you're trying to be in right alignment with the vision you had of being successful. Because you are not receiving what you want, you will eventually lose faith in prayer and open yourself up to be a target of the enemy. Anyone that is not praying is a target of the enemy. You have no protection. You are discontent. You ain't even a target. You are animatronic of the enemy. He got you under full control if you're discontent. That means you are doing what he says to try to feel your discontentment. Can I keep preaching? Ephesians 5 and 3, but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as what? Becoming saints. Oh, we preach the no fornication and no uncleanness, but the third one is covetousness. All three of these are equal in this particular scripture. So you can't make one worse than the other. Fornication, uncleanness, and wanting what others have. Covetousness, which is discontentment. They should not be named once among you as becoming saints. Violations, trauma, less than ideal upbringings, etc. can cause discontentment to dwell in the heart of a person. So much so that it causes them to sabotage good situations in exchange for quick paths to achieve certain things. 
They cover what others have and are receiving to the point of anger, betrayal, and even hatred. All because they want what someone else has. Hatred? You're just going to hate somebody because you want what they have? You want them to fail? You want to snatch them out of a good situation? You want to mess up their contentment because you're discontent? Praying against discontentment starts with finding the source and healing the trauma of your past. I know folks get tired of hearing this, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, brother, you know, you know, I've outgrown the word, you know, you, what you're preaching, you know, I've outgrown it. It's, it's a little, you know, you're preaching elementary, you know, I'm, I moved on to the deeper things in the word. And the, well, that's great. Just great. Be deep. I'm going to keep preaching to these issues so folks will get their hearts healed and they can truly be filled with the Holy Ghost. All the Pharisees were deep. They knew the letter of the law better than anyone. But they knew the letter without the spirit. Then when the spirit confronted them, they wanted to kill the spirit. Because the spirit showed them, out of all your knowing, you know nothing. If you can't love one another. Out of all your knowing, you know nothing. If you can't pray for your enemies. Out of all your knowing, you know nothing. If you can't forgive. Praying against discontentment starts. With finding the source and healing from the trauma of your past. This helps you be grateful for what you have and it stops you from coveting what others have. Some folks, as soon as they hit their knees to pray, they're thinking about what somebody else has. Brother, that's a problem. That's a problem. Until you forgive your father, you're going to keep trying to prove yourself and prove your worth to him. And show him what it is you got without him. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. It has to be God to let you know where this trauma is coming from. So you have to get before God. The COVID is a good time to get before God and find out what is brewing inside of me that's about to make me say that all I've known up to this point has been a lie. Praying against discontentment and coveting. Okay, this is going to help you do that. Because you got to get this stuff out of you. Amen. I thank God. You know, me and my wife's history, I thank God that, you know, when we were younger and different things, we would, we would be so happy when folks got stuff. We'd go over their house and just, I mean, we would enjoy their blessing. And then we would get in the car and talk about how happy we were about their blessing. And we never, listen, she's right there. She's my, we never said, I can't wait till we get, oh, that should have been, oh, never. That never happened. Because I was good with whatever the Lord thought I should have. Folk don't believe them stories. They told me. They, they told me. They don't believe. No, 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 I don't believe. Yeah, they even was there. They don't believe them stories. Amen. Mimi was there. We was cooking shrimp off of, off of uh, 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 food stamps. And have a shrimp ball. See, she honked the horn. And Tanya was there eating that shrimp. Was you there, Tanya? The food staff. We had a crab ball on the, on the, on the county. And was just as happy. Content. I didn't know how it was going to play out. I didn't know if I would be a street preacher like this. And we just have to eat as folks fed us. I didn't know how it was going to play out. But I was willing to do it, whatever God wanted. The, the, first, the first thing that's going to help you pray for contentment. Y'all still here? Y'all good? <laughs> Number one, the way you start your day is how your day will play out. The way you start your day is how your day will play out. If you fall out of, out of bed and cuss, you're going to have a bad day <laughs> You started off wrong. So we should start it with thanksgiving and gratefulness to God each morning. Just being thankful. This should be heartfelt 
and not routine. Not routine. Don't say the same thing every morning. Or it'll just turn into, oh, thank you, thank you, your Lord. Grateful, grateful. Where's my waffle? It'll just, just, don't make it routine. Amen? This should be heartfelt. This act, no, no, fall in love with this act. So you fall in love with waking up, looking forward to thanking God and being grateful for the clothes, for the food, for the shelter, for the, well, everything he's done, for bringing you out of your old pimpish ways, whorish ways. Amen. God done mighty deliverance for some of us. Amen. So you should thank him every morning. This should be heartfelt and not routine. Fall in love with this act. This act, listen, will build contentment by reminding you each day of the things you have and how good God has been to you. That's how you start your day. Second thing, put the needs of others before your own. I've said that. I said that on the prayer a couple of weeks ago. Praying for others will take your eyes off what others have and make you mindful of their needs. So stop looking at what they have and pray for their needs. Because no matter what you have, you have needs. Money don't change nothing. It amplifies things. So if you had an issue when you got money, you, you got money to, 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 to finance your issue now. So you pray for their need. Once you pray for their need, you get your eyes off. That'll take your eyes off what they have. And you won't want what they have. You'll be concerned about their need. This counters covetousness and will cause you to rejoice when they receive instead of enviously hating what God does for them. So you'll rejoice because, hey, I prayed for that. God has blessed them. They came through it. And it's because I prayed the prayer for them. And it just changes the way you're even looking at them. Instead of getting mad when they get something, envious, wishing they were dead because they got what you always dreamed of having. Now, this is some foolishness. Number three. Before bed, before you go to sleep, listen, and this is important, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke this to me. If you have been through molestation, sexual violations, overexposure, or maybe grew up without a strong man in your home, you should end each day with a prayer for sweet sleep and rest. You should pray for your protection at night. This is where the devil takes advantage of you because that's your most vulnerable state when you are asleep. The devil targets the nighttime when you are vulnerable, so you need protection while you sleep. So before you sleep, if you're married, let your husband, y'all just, you, you pray for him. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you see him tossing and turning, you say a prayer for him. I feel my wife doing that for me because she knows all I got to carry, all I've been through, all this stuff. Some nights I'm having a rough night or whatever, she'll just pray for me tonight or she would just turn on the light and just start reading the scriptures while I'm asleep. And I can feel it and it'll just settle me down. Amen. You know, it's a lot preaching the gospel in 2020, just in case you didn't know. My job is tough. Just in case you didn't know. Amen. But nightmares, mere demons, incubus, succubus, and especially astral projectural spirits. Now, if somebody hates you and is envious of you and is trying to destroy you, you don't think that they will Google astral projection and find a way to get in your house? Now, we're talking about hate. Oh, that got everybody quiet, didn't it? Yeah, if somebody actually hates you, is so jealous of you that they want you dead, you don't think they will figure out a way to astral project or go pay somebody to send the spirit to your house? You should hear the stories I have of folks doing this. They do this. They do it to me. They want me to stop preaching so bad. And they're doing it to you. Some of them. That's why you can't sleep. The main thing, those of you that are trying to conceive and you want a child, that's the number one, that's the number one thing people do to keep you from giving birth. Send incubus and succubus to your house. So you need to make sure there are no soul ties that they can operate through, or you need to make sure you pray against the power of astral projection. Break it off of your house. My wife don't pray unless she says that. Every prayer she pray, 
She break every spirit of astral projection. We know that stuff is real. And number four, racing thoughts and constantly dwelling on things you cannot change will only cause more discomfort in your heart. So you protect your sleep from, sleep, uh, from insomnia spirits. Spirits of insomnia that come to make you, you don't start thinking hard until you lay down to go to sleep. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. That's the devil trying to make you unhealthy. Racing thoughts. And here's the crazy thing. You're thinking about things that you can't do nothing about in your drawers and your pajamas. And it's keeping you up. Or you're thinking about things that you can't do anything about at all. Things you can't change. And those thoughts are rapidly going through your head. That's a spirit. So you need to pray against that spirit when you lay down to sleep. Oh, but let me tell you something. A lot of those spirits come from people you're talking to. I did a message called blood in your ear, but I think some of them wasn't here, Elder, when I, when I preached it. Folks put blood in your ear and have you up all night, and they're at home sounding like a leaf blower. But they done told you something that rocked your world, shook you up, and you want to keep them as your friend. And they keeping you up at night, speaking things into you. You better pray to God and ask him where that's coming from. Because the less you sleep, the crazier your mind gets. You won't be able to rub two good thoughts together without sleep. Can I keep going? I'm enjoying this myself. During this time of confinement and uncertainty, we must not fill our hearts with discontentment or things that lead to covetousness. We must carefully manage social media, entertainment, and our thought processes so that we will not dwell on what we want or do not have. We must be grateful for all that we have and pray for those that have less. God will give us what we need in due season if we do not fret over what others have. God is faithful. How many of you know he's faithful? And everything is a cinch. What? Take your time, young man. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time, young lady. Take your time. Everything is a cinch, inch by inch. Hebrews 13 and 5. Yes, something bit me. Old devil trying to bite. That's all right. I got the Holy Ghost. I shake him off like Paul and that snake. Kind of hurt, though. Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Listen, God is blessing people here. But many other people here have worked very, very hard because it takes hard work in our society. But God will do it. Thank you. He will do it, and he'll take care of you, and he'll bless you, and he will give you peace if you remain content and you're able to thank him for what he's done thus far. Amen? Discontentment says, I'm not grateful for what you've done because it's not enough. How do you expect to receive from God feeling that way? But you need to get covetousness out of your life or you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Thank you, Father God, for just being wonderful to us up to this point, taking care of us, blessing us, 
showing us the way we should go, ordering our steps, blessing the work of our hands. Father God, giving us the things you desire for us, and most importantly, giving us contentment in those things. I pray, Father God, that we will keep our heart of contentment and not covet. Father God, where we will rejoice when others have. We will rejoice with them when they're blessed. Father, we will pray for the needs of others and just trust you to take care of us. You know what we can handle. You know what belongs to us. You know what you want us to have. You know. But your word said for us to seek ye first the kingdom and your righteousness, right alignment, in the right place. And all these things shall be added. It'll make people scratch their heads, God. Why? How? Because all we have to do is line up with your righteousness. So I pray right now, Father God, that those under the sound of my voice will take the initiative to pray against covetousness, to pray against discontentment, to pray against false self-doctrines of men so that we will be pleasing to you and follow your word and stand strong for you in this last hour so nothing will shake us from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.